<laughs> okay, so this is different, isn't it? Isn't it exciting, worshiping here in this place? Good thing we have this, right? We got plenty of room here. Um, yeah, this morning after worship today, we're going to have our little uh, meeting, our town hall meeting, about uh, the pastors that are on the uh, call list. Uh, two pastors that the call committee are putting forward as the two that they think best suits our congregation. So we'll be talking about that after worship today and after worship the next Sunday, too, especially for those that couldn't be here today. Uh, we thought things would be easier having worship here in the fellowship hall. It's cooler. Uh, yesterday I was at a reenactment with 90 degree weather. It was terrible. It was brutal. Uh, and also down at the fellowship hall, I don't know if they cut the grass down there, so it's hard for some people to walk on the grass. So this works out uh, just fine. So we'll be following the order of worship today, and uh, I ask you to please rise if you are able to for our opening hymn. And I hope you got an individual <coughs> communion kit, because we'll be taking communion in our pews today. So,
We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are fear. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we plead for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now take a few moments for silent private confession. God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 beginning at verse 9. 
A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, he immediately sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, setting sail from Troas, he made a direct voyage to Samaras, and the following day to Napoleon, and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Russian colony. We remained in the city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered, had, who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia, from the city of Tyrapera, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank you, God. God. We speak the gradual together. Christ, Christ has, has risen, risen from, from the dead. dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our epistle reading comes to us from the book of Revelation, selected verses. Then came one of the seven angels who had seven bowls full of the seven plagues and spoke to me, saying, Come. And I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Its radiance was like a most rare jewel, a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates, Twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And on the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And, on, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the streets of the city were pure gold, transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple was the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. And the city had no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and the lamb and the lamp is a lamb. It is light for the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring all their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will ever enter it nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as the basis for our sermon is taken from the Gospel of John, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, you o Lord. Lord. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five co covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated and we'll sing our hymn of the day. <clears throat> mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Marshall Hayden once wrote an article called Hurting People in Church. And he stated in his book that people usually come to church wearing their best clothes and best smiles and everybody looks happy. So we assume 
everything is okay. However, he suggested that we need to look beyond the facade and realize that our pews are full of hurting people. On one hand, there are people who are hurting from major problems like divorce, unpaid bills, serious health issues, conflicts in their relationships, physical or emotional abuse, guilt from abortion, and losing a job or a loved one. And there, on the other hand, there are some people with lesser difficulties, like maybe having a boring job, or maybe getting a bad grade in school, or maybe some simply having a misunderstanding with someone, or maybe just having like a bad hair day, or just having our normal aches and pains that we experience as we get older. And the list can go on and on and on. So I am sure that some of us, if not all of us here today in these views, are hurting in some way. And that is why we're here. Because we want to hear some encouragement, we want some support. And our gospel reading for today can give us that. Because our gospel reading is about a man that had a very serious, major problem. And there are several lessons that we can learn from Jesus' encounter with this man, especially when we feel overwhelmed by the problems we're experiencing. And the first lesson we learn is where to go for help. In verses 1 and 4, it says, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Jews, and there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, was a pool, in Aramaic called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. And here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. That word great number means a crowd, a massive crowd would gather together at this pool. So many that they built those colonnades around the pool so they could be sheltered uh, from the sun. Now, according to another manuscript, the reason that they were doing that is from time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down and stir the waters. And the first one into the pool after each disturbance would be cured of whatever disease he had. Now, the word Bethesda means house of mercy or house of kindness. So there must have been real cures that took place in that pool or all of those people wouldn't be there. All those disabled people would be there waiting and watching for that water to be stirred so that the first one in would be healed. Well, this morning, I hope all of us are here because we know where to go, where to come for help. I saw a card one time on Facebook that said, the church is a hospital for sinners not a club for saints. And then it asks, do you go to church to get better? Now, unfortunately, especially the last few decades, a lot of people have been going to church because they think of it as a club, a place where they can have maybe their emotional needs met so that they can feel happy or satisfied. 
instead of going to church where they can experience spiritual healing and restoration. So hopefully all of us here are this morning, are here this morning because we know we are sinners and that we're struggling through major and minor problems. And there are times when we even uh, may doubt our Heavenly Father's love and his care for us. But we're here because we know that we need that spiritual healing which can help us through those physical and emotional uh, problems that we're experiencing. And that is because in the church, in every congregation, Jesus gives us the word and the sacrament. So the Holy Spirit can work through them for each and every one of us in our own separate and individual ways. As the Holy Spirit works in our minds and works in our hearts and nourishes us uh, in our faith, in our trust, so that no matter what we experience physically, whatever diseases, whatever disabilities, whatever problems, we continue to trust in our Heavenly Father's love for us in Jesus. The second lesson it teaches us is to be patient. Because there, that man had been there uh, for 38 years. He was a cripple for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him and, and came to know that he was uh, crippled for so long, he said to him, do you want to be healed? But the sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the pool is stirred. And while I am going, another steps in before me. Now, can you imagine how that man felt? Can you imagine how helpless, how frustrated, how discouraged he must have felt? I don't know how long he was going to that pool, but I imagine he had been going there for some time. And I can just picture him trying to crawl or pull himself to that pool, but someone else gets in before him and walks away pure. Now, he laid there probably for years, day after day, and he was probably hoping, probably praying for God to send someone to help him into that pool so he could be the first one in and be cured. But our Heavenly Father sent him someone better, right? Sent him Jesus so that he did not have to go in that pool to be cured. But Jesus could do it with a word. Now I know that at one time or another, all of us have prayed for some kind of healing whether it's physical, mental, emotional, and if not for ourselves, we pray on behalf of others. However, I think sometimes we have become spoiled because in our society, with all the knowledge, with all the technology, people are looking for, even expecting instant cures for what Hail, uh, ails them, whether it's emotional or spiritual, whatever. Because look at all the people that are depending, get hooked on drugs. And all the people that have been ODing from drugs. Or just think of looking out at all the diversions that people have to take their minds off their problems, at least for a little while so that they could feel good for a little while. And a lot of people find that in sports or some other activities. But the fact of the matter is, that does not cure them, right? It might take their mind off it for a while. They might forget the pain because they're doing something, but the pain is still there. It's no cure. And I'm sure there have been times in our lives when we have suffered some affliction and we have felt helpless or frustrated 
or discourage like that man who is by that pool for as long as he may have been there. And we may have even doubted our Heavenly Father's love because the answers didn't come as quickly as we wanted or the cure didn't come in the way that we wanted it to come. And maybe some of us are still waiting, right? We're still waiting for that cure. And that is why that man is a good example for us because we need to keep trusting in our Heavenly Father's unconditional love and mercy and grace for us in Jesus and wait for that cure, that healing, no matter how long it takes because we know that he loves us. We know that he continues to watch over us. We know he continues to care for us and his Holy Spirit keeps us trusting in him in spite of that. And that's what St. Paul learned for himself. You know, as great as St. Paul was, uh, the apostle, and sharing the gospel with all those people, he suffered so many things we can't even imagine. And it had to be because the Lord enabled him to do that. But we know that in his second letter to the Corinthians, he told them, he wrote to them, which also to us, so to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, that is the revelations he was receiving uh, from the Holy Spirit, a thorn was given to me in the flesh. We don't know exactly what that was. A messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's because he put his faith in the Lord. And that's why it's so important for us, and that's what the great sending is all about, it's important for us to tell people about Jesus to tell people that the church is a hospital for sinners where they can find spiritual healing so that they can find the faith and trust they need as they go through their different problems. And the church offers them the medicine. And that medicine is the word and the sacrament through which the Holy Spirit does healing. And then the third lesson is that Jesus is the only one who can make us whole. When I mean whole, I'm holistic. Holistic, mind, body, spirit, whole. Jesus is the only one that can do that. Because it says in verse 6, Jesus saw the in, in, invalid man lying there and learned that he'd been there a long time, and he asked him, do you want to be well? And the man told him his predicament, I can't get in there. And he said, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And the man was cured, and he picked up his mat, and he walked away. Now, the thing is, we didn't, the verses immediately after that tell you that later on in the temple, that's where Jesus Came, that man was in there. And he probably went to the temple to show the priests that here he was, a whole person. I can walk. I am cured. And he could worship there in the temple where he wasn't able to do that before because of his affliction. And then Jesus told him who he was. 
John doesn't tell us whether that man believed in Jesus as the promised Messiah, but we know from other occasions when Jesus healed people physically, they were also healed spiritually because they came to believe in Jesus as the Savior, as the promised Messiah. And that's what caused all those religious leaders to be jealous of Jesus because so many people were coming to faith in him through those miracles that they were experiencing. Uh, in fact, that Greek word, hygieus, that's where we get the word hygiene from. It not only refers to healthy and sound body, but it also refers to spiritually, to be whole spiritually. So like those people at that pool of Bethesda that were there for a long time, I know that all of us here have been, or are, or will be suffering in some way and have some afflictions. We can't get away from it. These bodies of ours wear out. And some of us may have even had those afflictions for many years. And we've been praying and we've been waiting for a cure. But for some reason, like in the case of Paul, God allowed that, that affliction to continue. And that is why we need to remember that as much as we as physical beings yearn to be physically whole and free of pain and disability, it is more important for us to be whole spiritually. And Jesus is the only one that can make us whole, not only physically, mentally, emotionally, but especially spiritually. And he did that by taking all of our infirmities upon himself on that cross and redeeming us not only from death, and, uh, but most of all from sin. And through it, giving us the gift of eternal life. So that when these bodies of ours wear out and were put in the ground, we know that someday, as Job did, we are going to see our Savior face to face uh, on this earth when he returns. And even though uh, we may not experience physical healing immediately, such as that man did, uh, for our disabilities or whatever problems, Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit. He has given us his Holy Spirit so that we can continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior. So that we can continue believing. We can continue watching. We can continue praying for Jesus to come again in glory. Because we know that when he does, these broken bodies of ours will be made whole. And we will be able to worship Jesus forever in perfect bodies, minds, souls, and spirits to his honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And that may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his precious name we pray, now and always, amen. I'd ask you now if you are able to rise and will profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Lord of light, very God of very God, begotten not named, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious of He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and we'll gather together our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. We do that. Got somebody for that? No, no, somebody. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> sisters in Christ, our pastors, and our overseers, and all those who are suffering right now, especially the people in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, you are our prayers. Lord God, you have founded your church as a place of prayer beside the waters of holy baptism. Give your holy people hearts to hear your gospel message, lips to offer their prayers in faith and readiness to give of themselves for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, keep your holy church undefiled from all that is detestable or false. Embolden pastors to guard her gates and to welcome those who draw near in faith. We ask your blessing upon our call committee as uh, they lead us uh, through this call process, and today as they share their information about the pastors on the call list, uh, who will, uh, in a few weeks, we will be selecting to be the next, uh, to call to be the next pastor here. And we pray that you give us all the guidance uh, that we need as we pray about it, think about it, and as your Holy Spirit moves us uh, to choose that one man who uh, we believe um, would be the next pastor here. We also pray that you bring the rulers of this world into your church to glorify her according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives 
parents, and children, assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give wisdom to our leaders in government, especially at this time in the world with all the conflicts that are taking place, that they may lead with integrity according to your perfect will. Protect police officers, emergency personnel, disaster relief workers, and the members of our armed forces as they serve in our defense and for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Compassionate Lord, direct and enrich the efforts of the faithful women of your church. Make them eager and wise in good works, serving the ministry of the church as faithful Lydia served the mission of St. Paul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you hear our prayers for the sake of your dear son Jesus. In his name, we cast our burdens upon you, especially the burdens of James and Amy, Chip and Martha, Stella, Faith, Mac, Pam, Carrie, Diantha, Carl, Tammy, Jamie, Lou, Mary Lou, Jenna, Butch, Jason, Dawn, Judy, Michael, the Porter family, Matthew, Terry, Grace, John, Tony, Paul, Tom, the Woodard family, Pat, Julia, Liam, Ted, Cindy, Janet, Sharon, Lena, Ed, Charlie, Susan, Kathy, James, Roger, Patty, and those we name in our hearts now. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit may be upon them in a very special and powerful way, that you would fill them up with your healing power, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, but most especially spiritually, and that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you may sustain them and us in the midst of terror and trial, and hear us as we cry out on this morning of your son's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, give repentance and faith to all who receive our Lord's body and blood today, that in the unity of the true confession, they may receive it for the forgiveness of their sins and the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
and given your only begotten to the Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after they had eaten, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do so in memory of me. We gather together in memory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into this world and preached the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in his name. And he came and he healed those of all sorts of problems, diseases, and he also gave them the faith to trust in him as their Savior. And we are gathered together in his name to receive this sacrament as a guarantee of our forgiveness of our sins of our healing, whether it be physical, emotional, spiritual, and the wholeness that we find in Jesus as our Savior. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed to wash away all your sins. Now may the true body and blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his love and his grace. Amen. And since we didn't have to come forward, why don't we sing this distribution hymn, but we won't sing all the verses. 
how about if we say verse 1, verse 3, and verse 5? Church, we have some bodies here, some to do that. 
So what we're going to be doing is 8.30, uh, the men of the breakfast club or whatever, uh, and it doesn't, you don't have to be a member. <laughs> Uh, I'll be sending you emails reminding you at 8.30 we'll have some refreshments and then at 9 o'clock we'll start moving the pews uh, back into the church. And it's not just the men, women can help too. And there's going to be some of us old guys that aren't going to be able to move stuff. Um, they can be supervised. <laughs> and there's little things they could carry that aren't heavy things. So it's, it's a good way for us to be involved, all the men to be involved in that. And even if you get there at 9 o'clock, uh, there's going to be probably some goodies left over. So you can eat, you can take advantage of that. <clears throat> and if we get enough people here, it shouldn't take, you know, all morning even to get, if we start at 9, we should have definitely be done by lunchtime, by noontime. I would think to get the pews back and in place again. If we organize the new women here. So, that's the only announcement I had. Does anybody else have any? Okay, uh, I'll let you stay seated. <laughs> stay seated, and we'll sing our last hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness. You can rest. Except on the last verse. Oh, on the last verse, you have to do it. <laughs> Serve the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week in Jesus.